Hello everyone, today, we'll be covering basic calculations in Microsoft Excel. So, the procedure of any calculation in Excel can be divided into three stages. Firstly, you need to place an equal sign in the cell where you wish to see the answer. Now, as an example, I'll select cell G6. I'm putting an equal sign. From this moment, the calculator mode in the program is activated, meaning I can now start entering the formula. In this cell, I need to calculate the sum of the numbers 46 and 21. This can be done in several ways. For example, I can simply type these numbers using the keyboard. To get the result, I press the Enter key. Done. In this way, I've gone through the three necessary stages. At the first stage, I put an equal sign in the cell. At the second stage, I entered the formula. And at the third stage, I pressed the Enter key to get the calculation result in cell G6. If you want to make changes to the formula, just double-click with the left mouse button on the cell containing the formula. I showed you a way to calculate by manually entering numbers into the formula. However, I can achieve the same effect by adding references to cells where these numbers are indicated. With the backspace key, I'll remove everything except the equal sign. Now, I click on cell E6. As you can see, the reference to the cell was added to the formula, and an animation appeared in the form of a moving border. Next, I put a plus sign and click on cell F6. Both references are added, and all that's left is to press the Enter key. The result is obtained. This calculation method is remarkable in that changing the values in cell Z6 and F6 will result in a change in cell G6. Here's how it looks. Moreover, I have a detailed lesson on my channel dedicated to how cells work in Excel. I'll leave a link to it at the end of the video. But for now, let's focus on the main topic of the video. Following the algorithm we've discussed, I'll make calculations in the remaining cells. and the last operation exponentiation. Here, we use the caret symbol, also commonly referred to as the hat. To enter it, press the shift plus six keys. Done. Now, we've looked at various examples of basic calculations. However, please note that if your table requires the same operations within a single column or row, they can be performed automatically and quite quickly. For example, now in the last column of the table, I need to use only a single operation in the form of adding numbers from columns E and F. In each row, this operation will look the same. Therefore, I enter the formula for adding numbers into cell G6. And now, I simply double-click with the left mouse button on the bottom right corner of the cell. Look, the formula automatically filled in the cells below. And now I won't have to fill them manually. Alright, moving forward. Please note that Excel adheres to the generally accepted order of mathematical operations priority. This means that in a calculation, the operation in parentheses is performed first, then exponentiation followed by multiplication or division operations, which have equal priority, and finally, addition or subtraction is performed. The last two operations are also equal to each other in terms of importance. According to this order, in the first example, the calculation starts with division, followed by multiplication, and only then is addition performed. However, if parentheses are added to the same example, the answer will be different. This is because, in this case, 
the operation within the parentheses is executed first. All right, friends, now it's time to talk about functions. A function in Excel is a built-in formula that can be used for various calculations, operations, and data analysis. Take a look at this table. At the end, there is a total row where the sum needs to be calculated. That is, add up all the values from the cells in the last column. If I weren't familiar with Excel functions, I would have had to manually add each cell into the formula separately. This is all right for a small table. Otherwise, I would have spent a considerable amount of time on this procedure. Fortunately, Excel has a special function that handles this much faster. Let me show you how it works. In the total cell, I place an equal sign and type the word SUM. Notice that the program already suggests the appropriate option. I can confirm it with a double click of the left mouse button or by pressing the tab key. OK. Now, I simply highlight all the cells whose values I need to sum and press the Enter key. Done. Pay attention to the formula. At the beginning, it says SUM, and SUM is one of Excel's functions that takes values, processes them in a certain way, and returns a result. In this case, the result is the addition of all the argument's values. The function's arguments are always within parentheses. In this formula, the argument is presented as a range of cells from the last column of the table, where F5 is the first cell of the range and F10 the last. The colon indicates that the formula specifies a range, not just a reference to a single cell. In my opinion, this is a good solution from the program's developers. It saves us from having to list all the cells from this column with commas because the colon already lets the program know that not only cells F5 and F10 should participate in the operation, but also all cells between them. Furthermore, you can add various arguments to the formula. These could be additional ranges, cell references, or values. Suppose I want to sum data from several ranges. I highlight the first range, then press and hold the control key and without releasing it, I select the second range. This time my formula has two arguments. They are a range of cells from column F and from column J. Between them is a special separator, a comma. And here's another example. Let me highlight the range of cells from F5 to F10. Sum it up with the J6 cell and the number 100. I put a comma and add the J6 cell. Again, I specify a comma and type the number 100. Notice that a tooltip appears below the formula, which helps you quickly understand the structure of the function. The first argument is mandatory. Without it, the formula won't work. But as you've probably noticed, the subsequent arguments are enclosed in square brackets this means they act as additional elements of the formula and their inclusion is optional. Before moving on, let's review the structure of a formula containing a function. This is important because without knowing such basic things, you can easily get confused when dealing with more complex formulas. I've prepared a small diagram for you. So. In our formula, after the equals sign comes the function name, which processes only the data contained within parentheses, specifically those following the function name immediately. If our formula looked like this, the sum function would only process this part of the formula. Accordingly, calculation in this case would proceed in two stages, where the first action is data processing using the sum function and the second action is multiplying the obtained result by 10. Therefore, despite the commonly accepted definition calling an Excel function a special formula, I'd prefer to call it an element of the formula. As shown in the example, the function is not the formula itself, but just one of its elements. Moreover, a single formula can contain several different functions, 
but we won't get ahead of ourselves just yet. Got it? Then let's continue. The arguments of the function are contained within parentheses and can vary. In our case, the first argument is a range of cells. You can easily recognize a range by the colon sign between the first cell of the range and the last one. Next, after each argument, a separator in the form of a comma is indicated. This symbol is called the argument separator. Depending on the program's regional settings, the separator can also be a semicolon. Therefore, if adding a comma causes the formula to error, try replacing the argument separator with a semicolon, and then it should work. Well, that clarifies separators. The next argument in our formula is a reference to cell J6, and the final argument is the number 100, which is not tied to any cell and acts as a constant. All these listed arguments represent specific values that are summed together by the sum function. So, you might have some questions by now. For example, where to find other Excel functions and how to use them? In the formula bar, there is a special icon that allows you to find and insert any available function. In the window that opens, you can search for the necessary function by categories, which are divided into financial, logical, mathematical, textual, and so on. Also, to find a specific function, you can use the search bar. I enter the name, press search, and the program shows me the function you were recently introduced to. Just below, there's a brief description of the selected function. And for more detailed information, you can use the help function, as long as you are connected to the internet. In total, Excel boasts more than 400 functions. Of course, we will not go through all of them. First, it would take an enormous amount of time, and secondly, there's no real need, as the main goal is to understand the principle of how functions work. Then, you will be able to independently find functions suitable for solving your tasks and apply them in practice. For this, it is enough to go through a couple of dozen popular functions. Next on our list is a function named count. I type it into the search bar. Good, let's read the description. This function counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. Let's try to apply it. I press OK. And a new dialog window opens up. Essentially, it plays the same role as the formula bar, meaning here we can define arguments for our function. The difference is that this window contains tips, and its interface makes inputting arguments simpler and more convenient. For example, I select a range of cells from column E. Notice that the formula bar immediately reflects the changes, but I didn't have to manually write out the formula, as we did a few minutes ago. Moreover, after entering the first argument, the dialog window automatically displays a preliminary result, which equals 6. I press OK. Done. We just applied the count function which calculated the number of cells in the selected range for us, and thereby we learned that column E contains 6 cells. If I now return to the formula and widen this range by one more cell, the answer will not change because the cell I just added contains text, while this function only counts cells with numbers. If I change one of them to plain text, the count will decrease, and instead of 6, we will get 5. I'll undo the last action to revert to the previous state. Next, Excel has a function that finds the number that occurs most frequently from a selected array. This function is called mode. In this case, I can specify not just a range of numbers, but an entire array. The function analyzed the data from the array and returned a result of the number 50. 
This means that this particular number occurs more frequently than others in the array we specified. Good. Now let's find the average value in column F. The function we need is called the average value. You're already familiar with the principle of its operation. This function is convenient for calculating the average grade, or for example, the average salary, etc. Similarly, you can find out the maximum or minimum value from a given range. The MIN function returns the minimum value. But, the MAX function returns the maximum value. Super! Now, I will go to the Formulas tab. Look, here you can also select the needed function, similar to how we did it in the special dialog window. But there's also an interesting tool here named AutoSum. What does it do? Look, I select the last cell in column F and click on AutoSum. The program did all the other work for me, and I only have to press the Enter key, and the sum will be automatically calculated. OK. In the same way, I can perform other actions, for example, to find out the average, minimum or maximum value, as well as count the total number of cells with numbers as we recently did together, using the count function. This is a convenient solution for simple functions, which will save you time. But, if you want to quickly get the result, and you don't need to enter it into any cell, just select the range you need. And at the bottom of the workspace you will see the same results, such as the sum, count, average value, and so on. This area of the window is called the status bar. By right-clicking on it, you can add other indicators here, just check them, and they will appear. And to finish the lesson, I'll show you a couple more simple, but interesting functions. The first function is called today. Its special feature is that no arguments are required. So the brackets remain empty. As a result, the formula returns the current date to us, and notably, this date will automatically change to the current date every day. You might say it's a small thing? But I assure you, in combination with other functions it can work wonders, and in one of the lessons, you will be able to see this for yourself. And the next function shows both the date and the time. It is called now. The brackets also remain empty. Done. If you press the F9 key, it will recalculate all the formulas in the current workbook, and the time in this cell will be updated. This concludes my lesson. Thank you for your attention. If this video was helpful to you, please like and subscribe to the channel to see even more useful lessons on Microsoft Excel. I wish you success and see you again.